Welcome to Tropical Paradise. This is my debut series here on Transport Fever 2, brought to you by Bigfoot. This series is going to be something different. This series is going to explore a lot of the new features of Transport Fever 2, and also, hopefully, a lot of the improved features from the original Transport Fever. This is an archipelago, meaning lots of islands, and we'll show and explore how we built this map in a second. But I really want to touch on a lot of the planes, a lot of the boats, a lot of the different kinds of stations, the different vehicles in with this game, and I think this is the perfect map to do so. Before we get on to talking about the scenario, I just want to also say that I'm going to be trying to tell a story in this series with this scenario, and I also want to really explore a lot of the cinematics of this. In my previous series on Transport Fever, my final series you could say, the Orkney Islands, I started to mess around with cinematics and try to really portray the development on the map, and that's something which I'm really going to go into a lot of detail here because this game is absolutely stunning. So with that said, let's move on to the scenario. Now, if you are new to this channel or new to this idea of the scenario, I provide a scenario for the series just to allow for a bit more of a story to be told and also justification for why we are building X, Y, and Z. So the scenario is that we are an island archipelago and we're only going to be allowed to build bridges which are reasonable. Now, what I mean by that is I'm not going to have bridges which span half the map. If a realistic two islands are quite close together and there's already a few bridges on this map which you might see in the background, then basically we will allow for them. However, if they're unrealistic, something which would be too long a distance, then we will not allow for it. And I'll make a personal judgement on that, however, please feel free to have your input down in the comment section below. The game is also on medium difficulty. Why medium and not easy? Easy is just going to mean that I can just really build stuff and then never come back to it. I also want a bit of struggle, and I did contemplate going for hard as well, but I thought, you know what, as this is my debut series, I think that might be a little bit too much, but I think medium is that perfect balance. We've also set no vehicle end year, and that means that all the vehicles we unlock, they will not disappear from the depots, meaning that I will have a large pool of vehicles to choose from, and that really ties back to me exploring all the new props, game items really in this game, you know? and I guess vehicles, vehicles do come under that category, so it'll be quite nice to see lots of different vehicles on the map and not me just really using one vehicle uh, at the later game. Finally, the aim, I think we've really touched on it, but just to summarise, it's really to try the new and improved features of this game. One final thing I want to say is that I'm going to act sort of as the Minister of Transport for this archipelago, so the maybe example I could give is that this archipelago is a newly independent country, but it's not connected up very well. There's been a new Prime Minister appointed, and that I have been given the job of being a Transport Minister, and I am to connect everything up. On that note, I do bring a disclaimer. So, as it is the holiday season, I will be going home. That is back to Scotland. I currently live in the south of England right now, so I will not have my computer with me. This means that I am mass recording videos, and videos are going to be coming out roughly every three days. Please follow me on Twitter and Discord. Links are down in the description below. Keep up to date, really, with the upload schedule which will be happening. So do please provide feedback, but be aware that I will not be implementing it until mid-January on my return. I'm going to have enough videos to cover me throughout the festive period, but because I'm not at my computer, I'm not going to be able to incorporate your feedback until about mid-January, and that'll be roughly at episode number 10, based on my scheduling. When I do get to that stage, we'll probably live stream, or we'll have a video just full of implementing users' feedback. And the big thing about this is, is that your comments will be included in the video. I did this previously in my Orkney CDs where I actually snippeted the comments and then brought them into the video. So make sure you leave all your ideas and I will capture them from this first episode right the way through up until we actually implement user feedback. So now I think it's time that we talk about the building of this map. So one of the things I really wanted to do when I seen that Transport Fever 2 had a tropical mode is go and start a map with that, and I realised that every single other Let's Play currently on YouTube has also done something similar, but I really wanted to go for it and see what it was like, and it really looks visually stunning. 
So as you can see here, when I'm creating a new map, I selected Tropical and I also selected Asia. However, Asia is not really relevant because I've named all the towns different names, as you will see shortly, and then I've also gone and allowed for all vehicles to be on, so I'm not locked by region. Once actually in the map editor itself, I started off with a blank canvas, and then as you can see on the screen, this is the layout I went for. So it was really around creating those islands for the reasons I've already explained. We went for no hills, very, very flat lands, and then this is sort of what we got generated, which was lots of islands, but lots of very small islands. So there wasn't actually a lot of ground which I could build upon, so I needed to make that change. So as you see in the background right now, we've got lots of gameplay going on, and it took me quite a while to actually build this map, partially because there was a lot I wanted to do to it, but also I didn't really know what I was doing, but now I have a bit of a familiarity. I think going forward, I should be better at building maps. So once I had my basic map built, I decided that I needed to expand some of the islands, which already had a bit of land, just to try and make them a bit wider, meaning that if I placed a town down there, it could actually grow and not be limited by the water. Additionally, because there were so many islands, there were some small islands which just had no relevance to me whatsoever. They would just be in the way. So what I did was very small areas of land I just got rid of. That would be very small islands or small peninsulas, part of larger islands, just to try and make sure that there wasn't going to be any blocks in navigatable waters. I need to make sure that boats can get around this map really, really easily, and that's why I got rid of some of the land which we were really never going to go and use. This took quite a bit of work with the terrain tools, but the terrain tools in this game are really, really good, and I really actually prefer them much more to the original Transport Fever. They have really just been expanded upon from there, but they are so much easier to use. This did cost me a lot of money, but as we're in the map editor, that money and debt will not carry over, which is good, but it's interesting to know that if I want to do something like this in-game, it really is going to be a massive burden on me, so unless I allow for my scenario to be adapted if I need more land, which we will cross that bridge if we come to it, but it is a very costly procedure to go ahead and do. So with all that done, which did take a while, I was sort of building up an idea in my head of what I want to do, where I want to place towns, mainly on some of the larger islands, and then also where to place industry. Now because in this game you've got the environmental factor to consider, and a lot of pollution constraints, I was really quite concerned about where I was actually going to place towns in relation to industry, but I thought this is a perfect idea to actually use the islands for different means. And as you can see in the background, I'm now starting to place down towns and industry, but I'm sort of separating them out a bit. I've got towns on islands, and then on some of those islands, with towns, I've also added a bit of industry, i.e. one industry location, but they're not really beside the towns, they're at like the opposite end of the islands. And then I've also placed lots of industry on their own islands respectively. So if you've been following me on Twitter and on Discord, you would have already seen this map, but this is the first map we've got. So we've got the different areas of water, so I'm wanting to try and make sure that we reference this map in a way which we can refer to north, south, east and west. Hence why we've got the North Sea and the South Sea, then we've got the East Bay and the Western Bay. That is just from a mindset of, okay, I'm going to talk about X, Y, and Z. I can actually refer to a specific area on the map and you would know. This map will appear in every single episode without a doubt. So the next thing is actually the towns. So where was I going to put the towns? Well, I really wanted to spread out the towns and we have sort of achieved that with relatively good success. So along the west, we've got three towns. We've got Westport, West Acton, and Salmon Rock, all on their own islands. And all of those gaps are too big to build a bridge over, for example. So they will all have to be accessed by air or by sea. Down the bottom, it's probably our most populated area, with Southampton, Sea Shanty, Montrose, and Winchester. That island is actually quite a large island, and it also contains an iron ore mine, which is quite out the way of Southampton and Sea Shanty, but I'll talk about the industry very, very shortly. In the middle, we've got Port King, Queensland, and Long Hope. So those three islands, I'm quite tempted with Queensland and Port King. I can't remember how close they are, so that might be a gap for a bridge, for example, but those three towns and the island which Long Hope sits on, that has got the possibility to be like a mega cargo hub terminal sort of thing. I think that'd be a really good crossover point. It's a massive island, 
but it's not being utilized its full potential. Then on the east side, we've just got East Acton over there on its own, so that's a bit more of an isolated town, which might struggle in some ways. Then going up, we've got Forest, which Forest is our largest city. Long Hope is our second largest city, and we'll go over this in the gameplay shortly. Then we've got the small village of Barra at the bottom of that island. We've got a bridge going over to North End, and then we've got Chisel Bay as well up at the top. Now, turning our attention to the cargo, as we can see it's spread out across the map. One of the things I wanted to do with cargo is, as I placed that second, I wanted to try and populate islands which had no towns on them and make sure that they were actually still of use, and that is what I've done. So basically, near enough, every single island on this map actually has some functionality. Now, it's interesting how I've done the industry. There's at least one of all types of industry on this map. However, there's some which are more, I guess, dominant than others. If we look down at Southampton, for example, we've got two forests and then we've got a sawmill on that island. We've also then got a sawmill over on the island between Long Hope and Montrose. So that is sort of spread out a bit randomly, but some of it's grouped together. We've then just got some islands which just have some individual functionality. For example, over at West Acton, we also have a oil well on that island. That would then have to be moved up to the oil refinery up on the island with Salmon Rock, for example. So we've got some stuff which is really spread out. We've got some stuff which is nice and close together. So it does mean that there is going to be some easy money making opportunities. But there's also going to be some real logistical difficulties in moving some of this stuff around. That then pretty much brings us to the end of the map building. Now, I know people are going to be asking this. I will release this map onto the Steam Workshop over Christmas. That will be after a few episodes of this has gone out, so you can give this map a go. I just want to make sure that I've already got a foothold on the map, make sure there's nothing wrong with it, and also have a head start before people download this map and then essentially complete it. Just one final note on the towns, so some of the towns have had their industry values modified, some of them have had them lowered down, so it means that I don't have to focus too much on industry, I have to focus on some industry. For example, a lot of the towns would have started with demand of like 90, I've maybe lowered that to 60, for example, so that's not the case in all the towns, it's mainly the case in the smaller towns, for example like Barra, Barra is just a small hamlet you could say, whereas Forest, Forest is a massive city, so Forest has still got its industry demand at its full. Anyway, I think there's been enough of talking about building the map, it is a really enjoyable thing and if you'd like to see me make a tutorial on making the map in Transport Fever 2 or actually making this 2D map here, it did take me quite a while but I think it's going to be a great visual aid for the series, then let me know down in the comments section below. Let's actually jump in to flying around the map and seeing what there is. Here we are in the Tropical Paradise map, we are at a crossroads in the town of Long Hope and we're going to go and hit the magical play button to get this series underway. Going to reduce the date speed down to a quarter for the time being but here we are, this is the town of Long Hope and this is going to act as our capital just because it's at the very centre of the map. All around us we can see all the other towns and I am expecting this to be one of the biggest towns. I think it's the second largest right now. Out of all the towns you can actually place on the map, you've got small, medium, large, and enormous. It might not be called enormous, but those are the four categories. There was only one enormous town built, so that was Forest. Long Hope was definitely a large town, and that can be reflected in the residential count, which is awesome. So we're also then going to go and place our headquarters down here. Now the headquarters is an interesting building which is not going to be very exciting right now. Going to build it over by the beach I think for the time being and it doesn't actually have to be connected up by the road from what I remember. So if we place this on the waterfront here then this means that we have our headquarters. It just gives you some more stats which we are very much going to be needing. And looking at it, it's not very exciting right now, but Bigfoot Transport, which is fine for the name, we'll update that at a later stage, but this is our initial headquarters. Quite a rubbish shack, you could ask, but it's got a very, very nice view. Okay, so with that said, let's talk a bit about the map and really go over what I was talking about in the introduction, really. 
So just as a note, there has been some changes since that introduction. For example, I believe this road for some reason had tram tracks on it. It shouldn't have had in the first place. That has been changed. I've also had a look at some of the other gaps. For example, in the introduction, I hinted at building a bridge between Port King and Queensland. That gap, for example, is too large, so we're going to leave that. But I do think there is some opportunities for some bridges in with the map at a later stage, and we will definitely consider those. Anyway, let's go ahead and have a look at some interesting money-making areas where we can start off our building. So first of all, down in the south here, we've got Montrose, Winchester, Sea Shanty and Southampton. Four towns on the one island, that could be very, very profitable and something that I will consider connecting up probably in the first few episodes. Additionally, beside Southampton, we have two forests and a sawmill. That is another really good money-making opportunity, with this wood being able to be outputted to various different locations across the map, either for goods or, I believe, am I right in saying, maybe wrong in saying, I think tools as well, uh, which is interesting. So yeah, so in the machine factory here. So a lot of opportunities there. Then additionally, we have a very good opportunity for the quarry to connect up with the construction materials plants just beside Long Hope and then provide stuff into Long Hope itself. And then up the top here we've got three towns connected up across two islands, North End, Forest and Barra. That's a great place to start and that is what we're going to do. So we're going to start in Forest, our largest city, not our capital, but our largest city. Going to put the game back on pause and Looking at this town, there's a big enough gap now for me to build a bus station, and that's what I want to do. So let's plop down this basic bus station, and this will do its job just fine. The reason I'm placing a bus station down is because I'm going to have a connection down to Barra and then up to North End. And from this station, which has two terminals, it's perfect. It will do the job wonderfully. So let me go ahead and very quickly get this started. Let's add in a bus stop or two, probably three coming out of Forest Seed actually, which is nice. Now it's interesting to note that in the previous Transport Fever, as soon as you place down a bus stop, it would give it a name. It's not doing that in Transport Fever 2, though I do realise that because I've gone for Asian names, it is going to be a little bit difficult for me to probably pronounce some of the names. Anyway, we'll cross that bridge if that becomes an issue. But let's go and improve some connections in the town of Barra. So we've now got a circle, which is what I'm wanting. We're going to come into Barra, and then I think we're going to go around the town anti-clockwise. And then we're going to leave basically the way we came in. Similarly, because we talked about it, let's go and connect up North End. So we're just going to have a bus stop at the end of the street. And then we're also going to have a bus stop as we leave town. And we're going to go over the one and only bridge and we're going to come into North End. Now North End for the time being, I'm not going to add in a bus station I don't think. We're just going to go straight up the middle of North End. And then we're probably just going to turn around in a turning circle at the top which is perfect. So North End, quite a large town. I think it's either a large or a medium. But it is relatively big nonetheless. It definitely has some good demands for passenger movement, which is really good to see. Now, if we actually look at some of the overlays, there's some fantastic overlays in this game. This one here is the street traffic. There's not a lot of traffic on the roads right now. It's also 1950, so we're sort of at the start of the automobile revolution, but we will be able to see really easily if there is lots of cars going in between these two towns, if we need to increase or decrease our public transports. And then similarly, we have got the destination layer, which we can see that very much this road is looking quite busy in terms of movement. So private transport, there is lots of vehicles using this. So this is a great opportunity to put our public transport and take away from the movement going in between the two towns. I'm hoping for the same as well. It's not as, it's definitely not as powerful or high numbers, should I say, in between Forest and Barra. But hey-ho, there is demand there, and that is what I want to see. 
So let's continue to play the game and let's go and build our first bus depot down on the edge of Barra. Have a nice out of town location which can be used for both our routes. So that's been placed there which is fine. Now let's actually go and draw our first ever routes here on Tropical Paradise. So we're going to leave Forest and just call at all the stops we put down. Run through North End very quickly and then come back via two of the stops. So we've essentially got a turning circle at the top of the town and then just call at the final two stops. Now, one thing you might be thinking is, okay, you could quite easily call and serve a lot more of the town and you're definitely right there. Problem is though, is that we don't have a lot of money and we're playing on medium, meaning that we are going to be limited in the amount of buses we're going to be able to buy. Now, with those 1, 2, 3 in Forest and 4 bus stops up in North End, the buses are going to fill up very, very quickly, so I don't really need to serve all of the towns at each end at this stage until we get enough money to buy more buses, and as the demand grows for these routes, as we get more money, I will append the routes, add in more buses so we can make more money. It's quite simple. Now, here is going to be something interesting. So, North End, large town. Forest, enormous town. We're going to go for the largest buses we can get. We've got quite a selection here, actually, and based on the overlay we were looking at, which was the destinations layer, we know there's a lot of private cars going in between those two towns. So let's go and grab our large bus, the largest bus we've currently got, the ZIS-155. It was mostly used during the Soviet Union 1950s, which is very interesting. This bus was not in Transport Fever, the original, but it does cost a lot of money. We currently have got, what, 4.8 million right now down in that bottom corner. One of these buses costs about 220k, so all in all, quite a lot. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by buying four buses, and then I'll maybe increase that number quite quickly. But that is those buses out and about. I'm also going to jump up to times two speed, but the date has not increased. And I'm loving that those two elements are separated, meaning that we're not actually going to jump through the years that quickly. And we can actually even pause the years and leave the simulation on, which is fantastic. I am already starting to see quite a bit of traffic on this road going out to Barra, actually. We'll have to see if the buses do take an effect on this route, because you might want to... And I think we're actually going to do that now, to be honest, just while it's on my mind. I'm going to add an a second connection into the town. I realise that this road is still going to be quite busy going out of town, but at least we have now got a second way to get into forest and means that this road will not be ridiculously busy. Anyway, let's jump back into our line manager. Let's start off a new line. Again, coming out the forest sidings, we're going to stop at the remaining three bus stops in forest. Then we're going to go round Barra in a anti-clockwise direction, calling back in again at 14th Street, and then at some interesting names that I'm not familiar with. And then we'll lap back in to our main bus station, which is fantastic. So we know that Barra is a much smaller town, and that means there's going to be much less demand. We also know that from our overlay. Barra currently has a population of 84, Forest has a population of 330, so it's basically about four times the population. So I don't think we're really going to need as good buses. I don't think we need these really fancy ones, which is good. So that means we can go for something a little bit different and try and veiny things up. What are we going to start with? I am unsure. I'm tempted by the C40s. They got 25 miles per hour. The maximum speed our ZIS buses goes 37. Because really we are going to be in country roads for quite a bit though, I feel the Fuso buses, which interestingly are a Japanese vehicle, which the manufacturer's employees actually allow them to name. So I think we're going to go for the B46 bus, which I think is a good, I guess, middle ground, you could say. Costing 150,000, so it's still costing quite a bit of money, uh, but we're gonna start with only three of these vehicles. And the reason is because these three vehicles alone are gonna give our town a 
Well, well, that's going to provide a capacity of 30 and Barra's population is 84, so I do expect more people to go from Forest to Barra, mind you, but even still, I think that should start us off good for now. Looking at the accounts and finances right now, not too much has really happened right now, assets-wise, and we can break all this down at a later stage, but right now, we're making a loss. Earnings over the last 12 months, it says minus 4 million, that is just due to the map editor. That value is in the billions uh, recently, so that will actually sort itself out quite quickly. Road vehicles, we've got 7 road vehicles right now with a top speed of 37 miles per hour, which is not very good at all. And passengers transported, total of 18 so far, so it does mean that we are getting passengers moving, which is fantastic. And you can already see that we were actually getting some demands building up. We have got 11 people wanting to go up to North End via Shanghai Street, which I'm guessing is the next bus stop along, which it is, which is fantastic. So we've already got quite a large demand to go up to North End. Let's actually have a look and see really how it is doing. So currently that route has a capacity of 48. We're currently carrying just under 30 passengers on that route. So it's not full yet by any means, but hopefully it will become more full as time goes on. So before we wrap this video up, I want to go and build one new route, and that is moving our stone from the quarry here over to our construction material plant on the island with Long Hope, and then from there really serve Long Hope with some goods, because I think this would be a fantastic moneymaker to start us off. Right now the demand, it's good. In the town of Long Hope, we need 78 construction material. How are we going to achieve that? We need to actually move stuff and we're going to have to get stuff onto the water, which is going to be exciting. Now, I realise I could actually make the construction materials on with this island, but there's no point when we've got a depot here and it would mean that we're sort of going the wrong way to then bring materials back into Long Hope. So there's just no need. So let's go ahead and build our first ever harbours on this game, which is exciting. Now the harbours have changed quite a bit, we do still have passenger, we do still have cargo harbours, but they are modular, meaning that we can make edits to them, and that's not just limited to harbours, that's also the same with train stations, with, you know, bus stations, airports, and it's fantastic, it really gives you a lot of customization. Okay, so, we're just going to want a very, very basic cargo harbour, we do not need anything fancy at this stage. Navigatable waters, we can stick that out into the water there, which is fine. And then if we connect this up by road, we just bring the road along slightly. One thing I need to start to do is start to use the correct roads, and I know people are going to get on at me. I should be using country roads here. I realise I've also not built with country roads, which means I might not actually be getting the top speed, but we'll sort that out at a later stage. If I click on the harbour, we can see that the cargo area the materials factory it's turned white meaning that it is in sphere of influence which is fantastic and then that means all we need to do is transport the materials down into long hope which we can set up quite easily well let's go ahead and do that then so let's jump in and let's grab ourselves a truck station which is quite a bit different from the previous game let's connect that into there costing 135,000, which is a lot of money as we can see in Long Hope, everything is nice and grouped together, but to get a better view, we can have a look at this view. We can really see the industrial area, and that is where we're going to want to provide our construction materials in it too. So let's go back in and see whereabouts we can place this. Now, I'd want this nice and central, so we can provide everything without having to have a stop, but I'm not actually too bothered about that. We're going to build this out on the edge of town here. That's going to cost again another 130,000, bringing our total cash under 3 million, which is not good at all. But we can actually have a stop, and I think we will have a stop, along one of these streets as a... Well, let me actually have a think about this. So yeah, we've got our truck unload stop, which is fantastic. So we can have one of these in there, and that means that we can actually set down some construction materials on the way into the actual final depot, which is wonderful. Then the other thing we need to do is we need to go and add in a harbour up by our quarry. 
Now this is where things are interesting because we don't actually have, I mean we do actually have a navigatable pass there. It really doesn't look like it. I suppose it does get quite deep there. But is it deep enough? I don't really know. Uh, but hey ho, it's going to work. What I am going to do though is I'm, I'm, I am just going to build the harbour over here to be honest. Just to avoid going through that gap because it doesn't look the best. Let's rotate this around like so and then if we build a very basic road need to keep clicking on the correct menu let's actually build the correct type of road which should come around the corner from here like so and then run into there which is perfect if i click on this we are in speed of influence which is perfect so all we need to do is connect everything up and then we're good to go so let's very quickly go and do that let's jump into here this is going to be our boat, which is going to go from Long Hope Transfer to Long Hope South. Wonderful names. This is a cargo. This is going to be... Stone comes out of a quarry, doesn't it? And this is the town of Long Hope. So there we go. That is that first route done. Then the next thing we need to do is build a route from the truck station to the truck unload stop into the truck station and then that will go directly back so this then is a ca but this is construction materials con matt we'll just call it and then that is for long hope as well and there we go so all we need to do now is actually get vehicles on to this and this is also going to cost us quite a bit of money so if we go and grab ourselves another vehicle depot let's stick it over here and then similarly we need a boat depot or a shipyard i guess it's called correctly if we turn that around and make sure it is facing in the right direction like so we'll have these two beside each other let's go ahead and i think we need to get the boat on the go first to be honest so let's see what we've got in terms of cargo we've got a lot of options here so let's sieve through them so looking at cargo we're gonna go and have a look through this list now, we are interested in moving stone, which as we can see is within this list. So we've got the wheel helm, which I do think is from the original Transport Fever, but I'm not really too interested in that. We're going to start modern and work our way backwards. Though we also don't need too big a capacity to start off with. That is something we need to be aware of. So, capacity, four compartments, 220, too big. Let's jump down to here. So this is a good capacity, 90 is sort of good capacity. Or 130 actually with the Schaffhausen. And that is a boat we used in the Orkney Islands in our last series. How much is that going to cost though? That's going to cost us 1.4 million. So that's too much money for my liking right now. What about anything else? This here actually, 100 capacity. Or 70 capacity. You know, we're actually going to start off with the smallest, or near enough the smallest boat. I mean, which one's cheaper? Uh, so actually, if we go for the, the Rigi, I think let's go for the Rigi, which we've also used before, then that costs only 550,000, gives us a capacity of 70, and we'll do the job just fine. So let's buy that, and then let's get the ship out on to the one and only shipping route we have, which is good. And then finally, let's also go ahead and look at some trucks. We're gonna be moving construction materials, and we're going to need to move a fair amount of them. So I can see the Opal Blitz and I can see the Benz. These are trucks and transport fever. And we've also got modified versions of them to carry different kinds of cargo, which is fantastic. We can actually see the Benz truck with side stakes. That can carry construction material. Capacity of eight, top speed 25 miles per hour. Only 97,000 each, very tempted by that. What about the Opal Blitz? Or something even more modern. The Gaz MM truck with side stakes. This looks like a winner. So capacity of 10. Top speed of 37. 181,000 each. Let's get two of these. And that'll do the job for the time being. So let's get that onto our construction route. And we'll see them roll out. And there we go ladies and gentlemen. So that is us with everything on the go our boat is out and about which is fantastic let's very quickly just wrap up this episode now and see where we're at because we've spent a lot of money three million over three million 
but I can successfully report that our bus route from Forest to North End, our red line, is currently carrying 38 passengers out of 48. It's making 250,000 though, which is great. That is wonderful to see that we are making so much money off the bat. Our Barra route is also making money and it's nearly at full capacity as well, which is cool. And to be honest, we can definitely add more buses into our red route anyway. Got a lot of people waiting for it, so I think it's now time to let the game run for a bit, build up some more money and then increase capacity before we start on some other routes. But there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of part one here of my Transport Fever series here on Tropical Islands. If you cannot tell, I do actually have a cold. I've tried to cover that up throughout the episode, but it is going to make the mass recording for me a little bit more difficult. But I hope you have enjoyed it. Please leave your feedback down below. As I said, I might not be able to incorporate it straight away, but I will try my best to do so in the near future. And that is all for this video, ladies and gentlemen. So please leave a like rating and subscribe if you are new around here. Go down into that description below and check out my Twitter, my Discord and my Patreon. Any support you can show me on any of those would be greatly appreciated. And that's all. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Bigfoot and I'm out.